Hi and welcome. So today I want to talk a little bit about why controlling your behavior is not going to help you resolve your emotional eating. So if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist and emotional eating expert. And I wanted to talk about this because when a lot of clients start working with me, they think they need to have more control. They need to have more willpower that, you know, if only they can can control their behavior, then they would be able to resolve their emotional eating. And I totally get it. This is something that I experienced when I was resolving my emotional eating. I thought, oh, I don't have enough control. I don't have enough willpower. I would look around and see all these women being able to eat the right amount and not binge and not be emotionally eating. And they just seem to be so good around food. And I, I didn't have that relationship to food. And part of the reason is that that's the message we're also sent as emotional eaters. You know, you just need to control the way you're eating. You need to eat less food. You don't need to eat past seven. These are messages in, in our society from diet culture that we hear. And so of course we think we're lacking control and willpower. And a lot of the times that's what's sold to us, change your behavior. You know, even I remember back when I was going through my emotional eating journey and trying to resolve this, I had, you know, those same messages. And even I had a cognitive behavioral therapist helping me to change my behavior. But the thing is, is that emotional eating is so much more than just controlling our behavior. That's at the surface level. You know, it's not about control. It's about going deeper into what's at the root, what's really creating this pattern. And so when we keep trying to change our behavior and control on the surface, you know, we just feel more and more frustrated. I felt so frustrated that I eventually hit a rock bottom and I threw everything out the window. And that's what happens to my clients too. They get so frustrated trying and trying and trying and not succeeding that, you know, they kind of give up. And so I want to share with you sort of the deeper root things that we need to look at beyond control. This is not about control. This is about finding what's true for us. And when we come into that place of alignment, it's going to be so much more easy for us to have sustainable ways of being with food and our body and creating that healthy relationship. And so like I said, emotional eating is multifaceted. And so there are different layers to this that are so beyond just controlling our outward behavior. And so, you know, that's sort of just, we're hitting the top of the iceberg. If we're thinking of emotional eating as an iceberg, that at the surface is changing behaviors. Under the surface are these deeper issues that we need to look at, these root causes. And so when I work with clients in the Emotional Eating Evolution Program, we look at these three key areas and we move through them in order to, you know, layer by layer move through our emotional eating. So the first key area is all about food in the sense of we're moving towards true nourishment and really optimizing our digestion. And this area is really important because we've been fed that diet mentality and that way of being with food. And here we're going deeper into our body's true needs for nourishment so that we're not restricting and following those diet rules that we're really tuning into what our body needs. We're optimizing our digestion, improving our mood. We're learning to discern true from emotional hunger. And so this is going to help us really understand why we might be binging if we are you know sort of restricting foods we're going to be able to discern true from emotional hunger so that when we're emotionally hungry we know what to do with that instead of just blindly just eating and feeling like out of control around food and so this is so important this is not about control this is about tuning into your body and reconnecting back to how your body is with nourishment and food. The second key area that's important is our body and our body acceptance. And so here we're learning to accept the our body and its rhythms and the rituals and needs so that we're not trying to externally impose these new behaviors. So, you know, we're at the gym and we're pushing ourselves or 
we're thinking we need to look a certain way. And that those kind of thoughts trigger emotional eating because we don't feel good about ourselves. And emotional eating is all about when we use food to soothe ourselves from uncomfortable emotions, from stress, from, you know, sort of these negative thoughts, we use food. And so if we're, we're still treating ourselves in that way, we're triggering our emotional eating through that. And also if we're not accepting our body's need, let's say for rest, we will trigger more hunger the next day, more mood imbalance, which then triggers emotional eating. So all of this is so important. This is not about controlling ourselves, but understanding what does our body need? How do we accept our body? How do we understand its energy? Um, you know, it's need for more food throughout the month. How do we have this deeper understanding and connection to our body, this deeper acceptance so that we can create transformation and not trigger our emotional eating. A lot of the times when I say body acceptance to clients, you might think you're giving up. It's about accepting your body so that when, when you accept your body, you're not punishing it. You're actually not going to uh, you know, go out of control. You're actually coming back to meeting more of your true needs of what you need. And when you meet your true needs, you're not going to go to these extremes of over, you know, of emotional eating and binging. And so your body has this secure place of acceptance so that it can transform. It'll start releasing what it no longer needs. And so the third, and you notice I haven't said anything about controlling. The third key area is emotional wellness. And this is where we really get into those emotions under the emotional eating that are running this pattern. And so this is where we process and integrate and resolve these emotions so that we're no longer going to food to soothe. We're actually meeting our true needs. And we create a new way forward. This is not about controlling emotions. This is not about controlling our food. This is about resolution and finding what works for us. What are our true needs? That's in alignment. And when we are in alignment, we feel good and it becomes easeful. There's no longer this resistance. So when we emotionally eat, we feel like that's not right for us. But there's a part of us that that's all it knows to do to kind of resolve any stress or discomfort. And so we work with that part to resolve that and move forward in a healthy way. And when we do, we combine these three key areas, what's going to happen is we start feeling at ease in our body physically and just in acceptance wise, we start feeling at ease around food. We have a healthier relationship to food in our body. We feel more free. We feel more confident and it is not about controlling we cannot control our way to get here. We have to sort of understand and integrate and move through these steps and move through the resistance to get to this place. And when we do that work initially, we get to this easeful place where it is sustainable. It's more effortless. And so this was my experience when I moved through all of these areas. And this is the experience of my clients. It becomes you're almost just internally motivated to keep going because it feels so good to you. You're finally listening to yourself. You're finally coming back to yourself. You're finally meeting your true needs. And so this is so amazing to watch. And, you know, this is the power of moving beyond control. You know, nobody wants to be controlled. And when we start controlling ourselves, we feel, you know, it doesn't feel good. It's like a small child trying to control them. We want to sort of get them to move forward in a certain way that is in alignment for them, that feels good for them. And this is, doesn't mean it's just like we swing to an extreme. It's about really tuning into our true needs because that's how we move forward powerfully. So I just want to say that, you know, this is important work and it's important to move beyond this mindset of I need to control myself into I need to really understand myself and go deeper under the surface. So we're going into that iceberg, into the deeper layers, because when we get in there, we're going to have profound change. And so if what I'm saying to you is resonating with you, this is the type of work we do inside of the Emotional Eating Evolution Program. 
It is my signature program with lots of support and guidance and a step-by-step -step plan to help you move through your emotional eating so that you can finally feel confident in your body and around food. And so I'd love to invite you to check out more about the program. I'll leave a link below. And also if it's resonating with you and you are ready to commit, you can also book in an emotional eating assessment call. So on the call, we find out more about you and your goals and how the program can support you. So if you have any questions about what I've shared today, please leave them below. And also please be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. And I look forward to sharing more with you and I hope you have a great day.